Okay, I've got my parts from JVC. Um, I replaced both the main cam gear and the sub cam gear. And I put them in place. And I'm just going to show you the alignment marks now before I go any further. This arm here lines up with this hole with a hole in the chassis. And this sub cam has a hole here and it lines up with a hole in the chassis as well. And there's a, 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 an arm here that goes to the eject system to the sub cam gear and there's a hole in that and that lines with a hole right there as well. And you can see the actual loading arms themselves. They are timed correctly because there is a little notch. The two notches are a pint and one are in the centre. They are at that particular point there. Going off to the main cam now. The main cam here lines up with, there's a little notch here in the main cam here, lines up with a notch on this plastic gear here. And this plastic gear then has a hole here that lines up with a hole in the chassis. And you can see the orientation then of this, this arm here then slides in on its post and it's got a little post that goes into this slot here. Then we have this arm here that goes into its little slot. You can see that's the position for, for the slot that goes into its little groove. I then put, it, uh, put a, a circlip on there um, and stop it from coming out. This one here doesn't have a circlip. And also this subcam gear, or sorry, main gear has a circlip as well. Now I'm going to start putting some parts back on this um, chassis. I'm going to I'm going to put in this part next, and this goes over the subcam gear, and this hole here lines up with a post that comes out of the chassis. You know you have it right when you can see the screw for the sub cam. There is a screw that holds the sub cam in. I think I've neglected to say that. There is a screw that holds the sub cam in place. And you can see the head of the Phillips screw going through that hole. The next and thing I'm going to put in is this chassis. This cable feeds through this slot here. assembly is held in by five screws. There's one here, two, three, four, and five. And you can see this is not going in right because there's something here holding in place. There you go. Now, this piece of metal here was Stop it from going down. Now I'm just going to get five small silver screws into it. Now we have the idler assembly itself and that goes over 
Here's a little post here in the center of this gear. Uh, gear. That goes back to the capstan motor. And that goes into this hole here. Okay, that's that in. Now we're going to this um, back tension arm on the take up on the supply side of the tip deck. And when you take it out, um, it just comes apart. It just comes apart. And when it comes apart, the spring flies. You get a spring. And when you're putting it back in, that's the way you have to do it. You have to put the long side of the spring, which is at the bottom end of it, it comes with hoops in here. And the shorter side then is pulled over and it's hooped underneath this little lever here. And that's the way you leave it there. I have it together now, um, as you can see I just put the second part on top of it and that's the way it sits there and you can see the spring below it. Okay, this arm now, the centre hole in this now slides onto this post here and you got a spring. It doesn't look like it's out there sitting correctly, let's see can I get a short closer shot than that. It's not gone down far enough because the circ clip's got to go over this. Alright, I'm going to take it off again and see why it's not gone down fully. I've got it in again, slid it in and as you can see there's enough room now on that post to get a circle clip around. What was happening was that spring that I lined up earlier on came out of its uh, its position and was holding it proud. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a circle clip on this just to hold it in place. And I got some of them circle clips as well. And that's the part number there for them little circlips. I'm just going to get a circlip. What I normally do is at the end of my tweezers I just a little bit of grease on it and that be enough to lift those little very very small circlips. As you can see it's sitting there on top just with a small bit of grease. So clip in place. Now we have the spring here. The spring goes onto this little latch here. So I'm just going to pull it around. Okay. time for it to put this brake band around. I left the screw in here, just going to take it out. I'm going to move this brake band around. And it's, it's got to go over that post there. It's a round hole in the this end of the brake band that goes over that post. You can see, and then the brake band is also got to go between this system here. Okay. Push down. Now we have our screw to put in. I 
and I did put markings on that there for where it was situated so I'm going to just put back there there is a, a system setting them up in the manual but it's just too much work it's just easier to mark it Put in this cover now for the idler and the gears. And how that works is we've got two little slits here, and you see there's an opening, wider opening at each end of it, and this slide down on slots or uh, posts here, another one here. And then it's pushed down. There's a little uh, groove on each one of those posts mm. that will retain it in place. Now we'll just slide it down. That's that side done. That's that side done. Okay. As you can see, they're in place. Now we have to put a screw in to keep it in there. Okay, that's it. Just going to put in this uh, guide assembly, and that would go over here beside the capstan motor. Three screws holding in place. Three small silver screws. That's one. One. Now I'm going to put in this uh, arm with the head cleaner at the end. There's no information on how you line this up with the gears in there, but so I'm just seeing it seems to be as far back as it'll go. Now I do have a the washer to go on here, the insert clip. and stick this uh, pinch roller back in place as well. And I got to put in two washers. Got me two little clips on here, one of this uh, pinch roller arm assembly in here, and I got the other one of this arm here, this assembly here. Also, I should point out down here on the take up or the back tension arm here, I did put a circ uh, clip in here earlier on, and it was the round type. The one that should go in here is the larger black one. If you leave the smaller one in, it, this arm assembly will come up over it. You've got to have a little bit of a wider one. 
I'm going to put in the uh, drum mortar now. This actual drum mortar. And I try to avoid touching the uh, drum mortar with my hands. Keep the oil from going onto it. And I'll start by putting a screw in here at this point and another screw in the far side first. That's two of them tightened. And for the third one, this little plastic assembly here has got to go in. And it goes in something like this. Okay, right in there. And it's another small screw, or another black screw goes down there for the drum motor. It holds that in place as well. You can see it there now. The black screw goes in there in the centre of that. What I'm going to do now is put in this load motor. Two screws hold it in place as far as I remember. Yes, two screws. And that goes in there at this particular point here. I should point out there is a clip at the end back of it, that clip there, and that makes it a little bit awkward to get in. Okay, it's clipped in now, and I'm just going to get two screws in it and get, keep it in place. Hard to keep it focused uh, in these little tight spots that I'm uh, trying to work in. And this one goes in here. Okay. Now we got this set eject system to go in place. This was damaged, I must point out, uh, by the customer. I straightened out a few bits and pieces, and I want to see how it works now when I get it into uh, its position. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to put this into two halves because it's just easier to work with when you have it in two halves. Yeah. Good change the orientation of this. We have a little notch there and another little notch there, like a hinge system that goes into that's one side goes in here and the other side goes into there. I finally got it in. Very hard to show on camera. But they've got the clip in, and then when you do get the hinge down here in place, you have to slot that fella in here. You see that wide opening in the chassis? That will come out. That will that will come out there by pushing it through. But we're not going to do that here. We've got that in. Oh. 
Okay. Okay, got the deck in, and I'm just going to give it a try now to see can I uh, load and unload it now. First thing I have to do is press down this deck. It's in the in eject mode now at the moment, so I've got to take it out the eject mode. Move a little bit. Oh, you would do this automatically in the camera. it fully loaded as you can see let's get a closer look at it I'll try and get a closer look at the loading arms we've got one loading arm here another loading arm here and this guide is actually they're all as you can see they're all secure now in their little notches and against that, that's against this door where it wasn't earlier on. Now let's try and uh, unload it. And that's it, ejected. I'm just going to leave it in the eject mode now so I can put in this housing here. Right. First, I've got to put this bracket on the bottom first. I did put uh, three markings on the bottom here to know which ones the screws go into. There's another one here. this in before I can put in the other part of the cassette housing. Okay. What I have on this here, if I can get in the shot. <laughs> There is a slide system here, and there's a wider notch there. And what I have to do is, on this, it get that slid into it there. And there's another one on the far side. We should be getting this here. That's it there. One side clipped in. Let's get a side clip in. And what I have to do now is get this hook into this piece of metal. 
and then push it forward to the far, same with the far side. I got two larger screws on each side there, just to hold it in place. And down this side. Another one down the far side. in the jack position. So what I've got to do now is pull it in. It's loaded this uh, well semi-loaded position let's call it. Take it out of the ETF position. Okay. And of course I'm just going to see this empty load up. Let me load it up fully. I'm going to have to put this on now and feed the load and water through it. And there's a clip each side. This clips now. I'm going to stick this connector in here. this loading motor here has to be put in the retainers here slips in there and then there's another retainer here okay go to the bottom of the board now And what we have upon here now is the PCB. Which goes on like so. Of course we have to make sure we have our mode switch lined up. Mode switch lines up with the markings I put on it earlier on. Right, we should have uh, three screws now to hold this in place. The last one has a, a little wash on it. Yeah. Right, now we're going to start putting these cables in place. Make 
sure them clips are out. Let me press these in. Yeah. And we got a similar system underneath this uh, screening can here. That's the output for the heads. And of course we have our dew sensor here that's got to go in as well. Nearly missed that. <coughs> okay, we're in a position now to start putting the deck into the camera unit itself. Um, see this work just because I can mechanically unload it and load it doesn't mean it's going to actually work so I got it really put now in and check it live see this will work first thing I'm going to do is pull back this connector on that and put this connector in maybe I'll get a closer shot for you Very hard to give you a shot of it. Same here, we've got a clip. Far side, I'm not going to be able to give you a, a decent shot of it. Let's see, can I get it? Also have then a cable up here at the top. The cable here at the top does got to go into that connector there. Now you're not going to be able to see this. That should be the cable soon, and it should be only a matter now of uh, golden hand case and put the covers on it. And only four screws to hold it in place. In a standard on a lot of camera decks. Easy enough to take this deck out, hard to strip down. I will be showing you the edited version because it took so long to strip down. And figure out the me how the mechanism actually worked. Last screw down this side. Going to get the uh, lens out of the way again. This clips off. So 
got to start putting on this side panel. There's a clip here. One connector goes into that position and there's another one that goes in there. So I'm going to see if I get this one on first. I'm not going to give a show you because it's the angle is going to be round. Maybe if I get up like that, that's that side in. Put it near the cable. I'm not going to be able to show it yet because it's hid. Okay, that's firmly in. stick a few screws in and see can I get just to hold it in place and um, we'll see can we put a a tape in it and see what happens I would use an old tape not of customers one the tape I took out of it is of a a wedding and it has to go back to the customer and uh, he preferably wants it back intact without any damage to the tape is number one priority. With the shorter screws in there. Okay. Three fairy size ones here. with the front as well. Another one at the bottom. We can put our uh, lens back on. It's clipped in place. We have a lot of the stuff in now, so what we're going to do is give it a test and see what happens. I'm going to put the battery pack on.
There you see, it's powering up. Tape deck opens. Moment of truth, will it work? Okay, I'm going to select VCR mode. Press play. And there she's up working. Just going to test the fast forward. Fast review, I should say. Make sure it's not having any problems with fast review. Okay, it's okay. Check this pause mode. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go uh, fast forward. Just checking the fast forward mode now. Press stop. Press play. Stop. Go and just check the rewind mode now. Press stop. Now press the play mode. Okay, I'm just going to eject that now. And see how my tape got on. What I have to do now is just check the edge of my tape, make sure there was no uh, raveling or damage done to it. And as you can see with that, there's no damage done to the edge of the tape. It's nice and smooth. Just remove the battery now. that gonna have to put this on now okay. two screws for this Your mic in. Your eyepiece. Yeah, connect up your lens. That's where your eyepiece goes in. Your mic. Just check all the functions on it. We have uh, functions, the picture through our EVF, and we have a picture through our uh, LCD. Back at the VCR mode. Press eject.
we're taping. And there she's working. Everything powered up and looking good. I uh, hope that's uh, of some help to somebody. It's been a, a fairly long uh, video over two parts. I could have actually put in the three parts, or maybe I will put it in the three parts yet, because it makes for very long viewing. Um, thanks for watching.